I'm sure you read the title of this video and thought, Amanda, you hate money? Well, let me explain. Lately, I've been taking inventory of my life and looking at all the areas that I'm not exactly happy with. For the most part, so much of my life is honestly wonderful, but there is one bigger area that is a constant source of struggle for me. I once learned of something called the Wheel of Life. Essentially, it represents your life broken up into eight major areas. Personal growth, health, family, friends, romance, recreation, spirituality, career, and finances. My level of satisfaction in each area has varied over the years, but one area has always been consistently low, my relationship to money. I spent a lot of time thinking about this and trying to understand why it is the way it is. And I realized that it comes back to my subconscious beliefs and feelings of being worthy of having it. So much of how we view money is based on programming we picked up when we were younger. Those beliefs set our patterns and habits when we are adults. My dad used to repeat a quote often. It used to drive me nuts then, but honestly, at the end of the day, it holds a tremendous amount of truth. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. My habits and patterns with money are on autopilot and it's up to me to figure out how to change this area if I want it to look any different. And to be honest, I've never been more ready to change this part of my life until right now. So the question is, can you really change an aspect of your life if you put everything into it? Well, I guess we are about to find out. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday. I don't know why these intros are always so hard for me. When I'm thinking of what I want to say, I have all the words, and then the minute I hit record, they all go away. So I actually had planned to talk about this, and then something happened on Sunday that kind of made the timing of this video rather perfect. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know that on Sunday I had to rush my cat Louie to the emergency uh, hospital because he had what appeared to be a UTI. He's gotten them before. I have either been able to catch it early enough and give him stuff or I've taken him in and they have been able to give him stuff. I've had to do this a couple times. Well, when we got there, it turned out that he was fully blocked, which required two night stay at the animal hospital which if you have pets and you've ever had to run them to the emergency animal hospital then you know it's definitely not super friendly to your wallet and I was quoted anywhere from 500 to 3,000 and then when she came out to tell me that he was fully blocked and was gonna have to stay there for two days minimum she said it was gonna be between 3,000 and 3,500 dollars to treat him <sighs> my heart just sank because I will do anything for my pets. I don't have children of my own. My pets are like my children. And yes, I know that they're still animals, but they're more than that to me. They are a huge part of my emotional and physical support system. Physical meaning that I cuddle them all the time. I would go to the ends of the earth for them. I, I didn't have an extra $3,000 
laying around. So I had to quickly figure out what to do because you can't you can't leave until you pay a deposit. I'm assuming this is because people in the past have gotten outrageous bills and have just left their pets. So fortunately for me, I have some resources. I was able to borrow the money from my brother, which is fantastic. And I'm so grateful and so lucky to have that ability to ask my brother for help. It just comes with another burden of now owing that money back to them, adding that on top of everything else financially that I am dealing with right now. So as I said, this comes at the perfect timing because this has been a massive issue for me for a very long time. One of the areas of my life that I feel most unsatisfied with and unhappy with is my finances and overall just my financial literacy. It's an area in my life that I feel like I tend to just stick my head in the sand in regards to. I have been spending a lot of time trying to figure out exactly why. So money and I have always had a very up and down relationship. It is either flowing in and I am spending it just as fast as it's coming in because I basically, if I'm not in a financially good place that I'm not purchasing the things that I need to but when money's coming in it's almost like I'm just quickly trying to get the things that I have been putting off while I have the money or on the flip side it's a constant source of stress for me and I am dog paddling trying to figure out how to make more of it this wasn't always the case to be honest I feel like on one hand it was really ingrained in me to save 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 when I was younger I heard that from my parents all the time like so many other families money was a very negative thing in our family and I don't want to get too much into my family history with money because I, I firmly believe my parents did the best that they could with what they were taught unfortunately I just kind of picked up and continued a cycle that I learned and saw I also really believe that I'm an adult I live in a time and an era where we have all the tools and resources that we could imagine so many of these resources are free I can teach myself and learn how to be good with money. My current state with my finances is just a mess. And I've mentioned this before in some earlier videos, and it's been a huge goal of mine for a while to really take a deep look at my finances, I think one of the things that is very overwhelming for me is that I work for myself. So it's not like I have a set paycheck coming in every single month that I know what to expect. It's very up in the air, it's very seasonal. That is very overwhelming to me and very hard for me to figure out a realistic budget for myself. So I think that I often use that as an excuse to have a very chaotic mindset around my finances. I've been taking a really long, hard look, like I said before, at why this is because so many other people work for themselves and do a fantastic job at managing their finances. Unfortunately, this isn't something that I feel like our educational system in the United States does a really good job at. And maybe things have changed a little bit since I was in school. To be fair, wasn't interested in this when I was younger. And so as I grew older in my early 20s, basically, the mentality of saving, saving, saving was more fear driven than anything. And it wasn't a sense of empowerment, like I'm saving for betterment of my life. It was that I'm saving because money could go away at any time or everything can dry up at any time and I better have this nest egg. So something that I'm taking a really hard look at is how I can change my attitude towards money and change it from something that is a negative, bad thing, to this wonderful opportunity to have the life that I want. Again, I wanna reinstate that I am not blaming anybody. I take 100% responsibility for where I'm at financially. That's very important for me to state because yes, I learned patterns from significant people in my life. Again, they learned those from the formative people in their lives. That's something that I think is really important for us as grown adults to do, and that's take responsibility responsibility for the things that are in our life. Yes, there are things that we cannot control. We can't control illnesses necessarily. We can't control pets getting sick. Uh, we can't control quite a few things, but we always get to control our attitudes towards it and the steps we take 
and the actions we take to move forward. And that's what I feel very compelled to continue doing right now. Like I said earlier, I tend to stick my head in the sand regarding things surrounding my finances. I get so overwhelmed um, and I get nervous and scared and very fearful. I'm trying to understand why this is as well. Again, I think it's just that fear-based energy surrounding money that I picked up and an area that I really need to dive deeper into in my understanding so I can create changes that are permanent and lasting. But I think that what feels so different this time around is that I have reached a breaking point and I no longer want to be in this place where I am so scared of my finances and I'm so scared of looking at them and I want to feel incredibly empowered by money and I want to feel like I understand it and I understand investing and uh, saving. I understand budgeting and spending money. And like I said before, we live in such an incredible time now because we have a wealth of knowledge and resources at our fingertips and so much of it is free. But the big thing about this is that we have to figure out what works for us individually and what works for our personalities and our time, our attention span. So I guess the question is, what steps am I personally gonna be taking right now to take myself from a fear-based mindset around money to one that is really empowering and I can continue to build upon and grow in. So number one, it's time that I take a really good inventory of my bills, my spending, what's coming in every single month, what's going out, where it's going, why, and get really, really honest with myself. So I can spend money very mindlessly and I can look up and have no idea where it went. So this step is incredibly important for me to gain clarity around. So why do I do this? So what is the root cause of my impulsivity? So one of the things that I find so incredibly helpful is a course called To Be Magnetic. It's based around the idea of manifestation, but really it's backed by a lot of science-based evidence and around neuroplasticity and psychology. It's basically just a personal development program and it's a community really just helping you get to the root of a lot of your patterns and your habits. I have not dove into it and really been consistent with it. So their annual manifestation challenge is starting. It's their end of the year challenge. It's pretty fantastic so many people are doing it and I am going to fully commit to the four weeks and make it one of my top priorities if you want to join I have an affiliate link for it below and I have a code that gets you 15% off and I just want to say this I know that the word manifestation can be really triggering for people and it can come with a lot of eye rolls and whatnot but it's really just, and it can sound really woo-woo, but I love the woo-woo aspect of it, and it's one of the things that draws me to it. What I really love is that it is based on science and psychology, and the manifestation part is just, in my opinion, kind of an added bonus. Getting all of the things that you want is an added bonus. What I really love about it is the, the lasting personal development changes. Okay, number two, I'm gonna cut back in every single area that I possibly can. And that again comes with taking a fine tooth comb through my finances and really getting honest with myself. And this idea of sacrificing has always scared me. I think part of it is because of what I've been through with my health. I feel like when I'm sacrificing, it is like a punishment. And the truth is, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. And so I tend to spend with that in mind and I tend to do the things that I wanna do with that in mind. I have to figure out a way to have a lot more balance here where yes I don't know how long I'm gonna be here the issues I have around my health but at the same time what if I am here for another 30 years but I have nothing to support me through those 30 years right now I'm looking into the best app to use to help me manage my money I am looking at mint and rocket money those are the two that really stick out to me but I'm open to any suggestions if you may have them is there a money managing app that you really like leave it in the comments below so I can check it out. Number three is create a realistic plan to chip away at my debt. So I'm not super comfortable going into all those numbers, at least right now. I think I can do this all um, and share it and document it without having to get into those. I, don't, I think that that's personal and maybe that will change over time, but right now that's personal. But for me, I do have to get really, really honest about my debt 
and what I have and why I have it and create a realistic plan on paying that down as quickly as possible. I will say this, I am trying to figure out a way of doing that and I'm looking at different programs and methods. I'm not into the likes of Dave Ramsey or Susie Orman. Those are two people that I, I will not be really looking into. I don't know, both of them just feel really aggressive and mean-spirited. Even though I know there's a lot of honesty that has to come with dealing with this topic, I still think that it can be done in a way that create like a positive attitude around finances instead of just contributing to this like fear-based mentality that I already have and I'm consumed with. Number four is I have to figure out investments and retirement. To be 100% honest, I'm embarrassed to say that I have absolutely no retirement set aside. And I know I'm not the only one, but that is really hard for me, especially as I'm approaching my mid 40s already. So I need to learn about investment. I need to learn about what is the best kind of retirement um, plan to set up. And if you have suggestions, if you know of good resources, again, you can leave them in the comments below. So how am I gonna do all this? How am I gonna stay on track? How am I gonna stay focused? Well, for me, again, it's about this breaking point that I've, that I've come to. Like I have to, nobody's gonna come along and save me. And that is just a hard truth. I think for so long, I just thought I would be married by now and have either somebody taking care of me, which I don't like to admit, but that was definitely a mentality that I saw in my life. Or um, I thought I would at least have dual income. And I did at one time, I was married, but that didn't work out. To be honest, I don't think I would ever be in a partnership where I was not contributing at this point. I really need to figure out a way for this to be trackable, some way that is really realistic for me. I do want to say this, this is incredibly vulnerable for me to talk about. I have a tremendous amount of shame and embarrassment around where I'm at financially for being 43, but I do know a big part of how this is going to be trackable and hold me accountable is by sharing this journey. I also know there are so many people out there in the same boat as I am. I think what I'm going to start doing is a series about financial growth and um, wealth just becoming more knowledgeable on it and I'm gonna share on this channel what I think right now I've come to is I'm gonna do a monthly check-in maybe update how much I have paid off what my focuses are on what I feel really proud about what I feel like I could have done better and I will put out one video a month on that I think that's what I'm gonna do for now I just want to reiterate that I do have a lot of shame around this if I'm being fully honest I don't want to address the truth of the situation that I've gotten myself into but I'm also really proud of myself and I'm proud of feeling ready to take this journey and make these changes. Both things can be true at one time. So do you think that I can radically change this area of my life? I would love to hear from you in the comments. Any examples of other people who have done this? If you wanna follow along on this journey, make sure you hit subscribe, like, follow, do all the things so that you will be notified every time I put out a video. So before I sign off, I also wanna share a really, really awesome idea that I've been mulling over recently. And I'm a small business, and I know that so much of small business success is people finding out about me and what I do. So one of the things I'd love to do on this channel is I would love to show your small businesses or small businesses that you like. If you have a small business or you know of one um, that you would like to share with me that creates a product specifically, then I would love for you to email me. My email is linked below. These products have to align with my personal values and ethos. I won't share anything that I personally would not use myself. And I'm going to prioritize women-owned businesses and, and marginalized groups first. You will need to send me the product so that I can use it for a little bit before I share it on this channel. So all the information is linked below and I I'm super excited about this and I'm super excited about this new financial journey that I'm on, even though it's totally scary and overwhelming, but I can do hard things and so can you. So I'll see you next time. Bye.